All right, so once you've finished adding color to your work, you need to use your phone or someone's phone to take a photo of your work. It's very important that you go to an area in your house that has nice natural light. You really wanna make sure that your shadow isn't covering any of the image. Get nice and close, doesn't have to be too close. Um, and then go ahead and take the photo. And then before you do anything with the photo, you're gonna need to crop out any of the uh, background, anything that's not basically the piece of paper. So if you can't do that on your phone, you should be able to do that on your computer, either in Google Drawings, or you can um, let me know that you're having trouble and I will be happy to show you how to do it. But cropping out as much of the part of the photo that's not your piece of paper is going to be really helpful for when we actually take it into the remove.bg website to remove the background. Okay. All right, and then once you've managed to crop your image appropriately, you're gonna go ahead and email this to yourself. Please make sure if it gives you an option of what size to email it, choose the largest size because that's going to be the clearest image. Email it to yourself and let's move on to the next step. Okay, so here we are, we're in my email. I've emailed this image to myself. Now you guys are gonna save it into your Google Drive and I would suggest saving it into a folder that is actually named appropriately so that you can find it when you're ready. Um, if you are not on a Chromebook, then you're probably going to need to download it to your actual computer. Then you're going to open up a new tab once you've downloaded it either into your Google Drive or onto your computer and you're going to go to the website remove.bg, which you might remember from when we were working on our virtual art galleries. You don't need to log in or sign up. All we're gonna do is upload the image. So you're gonna click on upload image and it's gonna ask you where you wanna upload the image from. Now for you guys, you're gonna be uploading the image from your Google Drive and hopefully you saved it in a folder where you can actually find it, okay? Um, mine has automatically been saved into my download, so let me just quickly find it. There it is. Okay. All right, now as you can see, it has removed the background, but it has removed some other things that I actually did not intend for it to remove. So if that happens, if it doesn't happen to you, you go ahead and you click download. But if it does happen to you, then you need to edit it. So we're going to click on edit. This is where the edit page, this is where the edit button takes you. This is the first landing part um, when you click on edit, but you actually need to be here where it says erase slash restore. So if you need to erase something that didn't get erased that you wanted to erase, then you would make sure that you have erase selected and you would go ahead and erase it. But if you need to restore something like I do or bring it back, you need to have restore selected and then you will be able to bring back whatever got disappeared. Now, of course, you're going to want to adjust the brush size. Now, you're also going to want to zoom in so that you can make sure that you are getting nice and close to whatever uh, area it is that you are trying to remove or replace um, so that you're making sure that you're doing it correctly and you're not bringing back something you didn't want. Okay, so I've made the brush somewhat small. And look, if I go over the area that I had intended to, I can always go back in with the eraser afterwards and get rid of it. I'm okay if you guys have a little bit of like a border around some of the things that you um, uh, tried to erase. That's fine with me. Now, it may not be um, great to have too much. So for example, this little area here, I might want to go back in with that eraser and just remove a tiny bit of it. But Again, it's not going to be perfect and that's okay. So I'm just going to go over here and bring back Ms. Zuckerman's hand, which seems to have disappeared. And again, because I like can't really fully see what I erased or what got erased, I'm going to have a lot of extra areas here that I'm going to have to go back in with my eraser and go ahead and um, erase those areas. I find this is much easier and you have a lot more control if you're using a real mouse. So if you have a real mouse, go for it, grab it and make it make use of it. All right, so I'm gonna keep removing what I need to remove and restoring what I need to restore, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I'm pretty much finished. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to click on the download button. All right, now once I've got my image without the background, let's move on to the next step. 
Okay, so once you've got your background removed, we're ready for the next step. So that's step five, which is portraits on the go. So you're gonna click on that and you will see a document that has, or a Google slideshow that has your name on it, and then Lego portraits on the go. And it's just a blank slideshow with three blank slides because I would like for you to do at least three different locations that you wish your Lego person could be. So let's look at how we're going to do that. For Ms. Zuckerman, I know one of her favorite places is Winners. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna search Winners. And then I'm going to go to images. Now it's given me a whole bunch of different ideas here, but I want something that's like this, which is the actual store. So I'm going to go ahead and add the word store. All right, now I've got some more options, but what I'm going to find is that some of them are going to be better quality than others. So if you're opening one up and it is less than about 500 pixels, so down here is where you see the pixel number 535 by 400. If it's less than that, then it's going to be a little bit blurry of an image. An image like this is going to be beautifully clear compared to an image like this, which is only 400 by 300. It's not going to be as strong. This one is going to be super duper blurry because it's only 220 by 138 pixels. So the larger the number is, the higher quality the image is, and those are the images that you wanna be choosing. So let's go ahead and choose this one, for example. I'm going to copy the image, and I'm going to go ahead and paste it. All right, now here it is, and we can see that the image is not the exact size of my slideshow. So I'll just go ahead and stretch out the image so that it fits. And in the corner up here, I can see um, which part of the image is included and which part isn't, and I'm okay with that part. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add Ms. Zuckerman in here. So making sure that I have my um, new Ms. Zuckerman Lego portrait saved in my Google Drive, I'm going to add her. So let's go ahead and do that. So you might remember this from the virtual art gallery. You can just go to insert image and then you can actually select your drive. And then mine's probably gonna be the most recent thing I did. There it is. So I'm making sure I'm choosing the one that has those checkerboard. That's telling me that it has a transparent background. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and click insert. And there it is. And now I can go ahead and I can resize it however I please. There's something else I wanted to show you, which is that you can actually add a little bit of a, a drop shadow, which might make it look more like the Lego person kind of belongs. So that's under format options. And then drop shadow, you could just click on that checkbox. And if you want to, you can sort of change it up a little bit. You can make it a little bolder. You can make it a little bit stronger. You can change the angle of it. Whoa, that's really, really too strong as you can see, okay? So there are lots of different things to play around with with the drop shadow, but I just find it kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. So there is one um, of my Lego portraits on the go, ready to go. I can go ahead and make Miss Zuckerman smaller. I can move her around wherever I want. Maybe I want her to be in the doorway. The only thing I don't like about that is it's kind of far away. So if I'm gonna do that, I would probably make the image much bigger. Um, but again, all of these things are entirely up to you. If you're having trouble working with it, you might wanna just reduce the page size. So here we go, let's try and make Miss Zuckerman look like she's standing in the doorway, but I want her to be a little bigger. I want the image to be a little bigger so we can actually see that it's winners. So again, I'm looking up here in the corner to see how big it is. And now I'll just move her down into the doorway. Um, so that looks pretty good. And if I click present, I can see what it's actually going to look like. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create one more. If you already know what you're doing, you can go ahead and keep working. If you need some more inspiration, have a look. So I know Ms. Zuckerman loves to travel, so she definitely needs to be on the beach. So let's go ahead and find an image of a beach that we wanna use. Do we want her to be here where people are flying kites? Hmm. No, I think I need her to be here where she's on a private resort. So I'm gonna copy the image go to my second slide here and paste it and that fits a little better than the previous one. All right, there it is. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I might as well actually just copy and paste Ms. Zuckerman from my last slide because I think it'll be a little easier. There she is. I'm gonna make her much bigger on this one, almost like she's standing really close to whoever's taking this photo. And she's like, hey, check me out, I'm at the beach. So something like that. She's at the beach with the popcorn, wearing jeans, you know, whatever works. I also know that Miss Zuckerman loves the movie theater. So I'm gonna go ahead and search Cineplex. And here's a whole bunch of different options. Let's see what size this guy is. Perfect, oh my gosh, huge, 3000 by 2000 pixels. That's an excellent size. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the image, go back here, paste the image. Gotta stretch this guy out so that it fits. 
and then I'll go ahead and copy Ms. Zuckerman's Lego person and paste it. Now you guys can go crazy. You can do as many slides as you want, all the different places that your Lego portrait wishes it could be right now. It's entirely up to you, okay? You can also play around with sizing. Is your Lego person an actual Lego person? Then they would be really, really small, right? Or are they, you know, an average size human being? It's up to you, okay? When you're done, of course, you're gonna go ahead and click turn in, and then you're gonna move on to the reflection. Have fun.